Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find us on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Uh, today we're going to go over my foundry setup with the improvements with the, um, uh, the waste oil burner. Uh, I fired it up a couple of days ago, did a quick video on it, and um, it, it was kind of giving me a little bit of grief. Um, and so I decided to um, make a couple of changes. The, uh, the Australian guy, the YouTuber uh, uh, oil burner, he suggested that I put a couple of pounds of air on my oil tank and said that that would really kind of help even things out quite a bit. And so he suggested two pounds. Uh, my air compressors, um, you know, they, they show in 10 and 20 pound increments on the gauges. So I wasn't quite sure how to put two pounds on there. So what I did was I went ahead and built a tank um, right here put it all together and it should be rated for somewhere around you know 100 psi something like that because um, I figured well why not build it like that more than likely it's just going to be run on like 10 psi which is what I had it running on last night uh, last night I did try to do a uh, did try to melt some iron uh, running just strictly on propane I had it running for about an hour and a half, and while I got the iron, I just had some scrap um, um, plumbing fittings. They got really hot. They, I mean, they were they were a nice bright yellow, um, and you could kind of tell that the surf was, surface was getting a little bit on the runny side, but they just wouldn't quite melt. So, um, and then I had a neighbor stop by, you know, uh, and he was chatting, you know, wanting to learn how you do it all, so, so I didn't get a chance to shoot a video. But after about an hour and a half of running on propane, I uh, decided to switch over to the oil and ran it for about five minutes or so and then realized that I was way late for cooking dinner, so went ahead and shut it down, uh, pulled the top off the foundry, and it had melted, uh, part of the, the fittings at least. And so <coughs> the aftermath of that was this right here. A couple of fittings, they were, um, a couple of them melted in some certain spots. But like I said, only had it running for about five minutes or so. That's just a, a piece of, at first I thought it was iron, but it's just slag. You can see it, it breaks up real easy. But anyway, I want to do a video on, um, uh, on the foundry running on waste oil um, but I wanted to explain the changes that I've made and you know it gets pretty loud when it's running so I figured I'd go ahead and do the video showing the changes first um, so that I don't have to scream at you and then um, and then I'll shoot a video of it running right quick so anyway so uh, alright so we got the basic shell of the foundry and it's just a seven gallon propane tank with the top cut off and it's lined with uh, um, a one inch layer of uh, body soluble K wool and then coated with castellite which is a uh, castable refractory it's rated somewhere up around 3000 degrees or so and then um, uh, some of the spots I've gone back in and patched with uh, satinite which is another castable refractory which uh, it gives a little bit better finish I like it a little bit better we just got handles welded onto the side for moving the body. A couple of handles, or little rings welded onto the top for being able to lift that. And then we'll go over the propane uh, assembly first. So then we've got a two inch pipe nipple welded onto the side. It goes in uh, to where it just sticks out past the refractory material. Uh, drilled and tapped a couple of holes in here, uh, welded some, um, I think it was just part of a nail onto the heads of the bolts so that, you know, I have a way to secure the burner tube into the, the inlet tube, I guess you could call it. That's just an aluminum ring that I turned to uh, take up some of the slack in there. Uh, 90 degree elbow, the propane comes through here. I'll show you, I got another burner stripped apart so you can see how all that works. Uh, control valve for the air, control valve for the propane, shutoff valve for the propane, regular five gallon barbecue sized uh, propane tank with the regulator and the shutoff there. The motor is, or the, the fan, is an exhaust fan for a uh, natural gas furnace. And I've got another one on the bench, I'll show you, show you that a little bit closer. 
for the oil burner, we've just got a piece of uh, a quarter inch um, pipe nipple welded in to the burner holder assembly, I guess, at an angle. And then we've got a half inch uh, gate valve, a half inch uh, pipe thread to half inch shark bite fitting. I've got a shark bite over there to show you too. This is just uh, PEX, half inch PEX. And then we've got the new oil reservoir tank. So we've got a ball valve here to shut it off. Now that piece was already, that was a, uh, uh, that fitting was already installed in the tank. I just picked this tank up out of my junk pile. So I think it says it's rated for like 125 uh, PSI. It's sitting on the scale. Uh, as you can see right here, I went ahead and cut a hole in the top and welded a three quarter inch pipe nipple into it. We got a T, a couple of reducers to get us down to a quarter inch, quarter inch ball valve, quick disconnect uh, air fitting. We've got air. I'm going to sit you down. Put that back in there. And then right here, I have a three quarter inch gate valve so that I can fill the tank. So when the tank looks like it's getting empty, what you do is you shut the air off, bleed off the air through the three quarter inch gate valve, open it all the way up, and then with a funnel, put more oil in there. Now this is on my, my gambrel here, so you can, it's on a block and tackle, you can raise and lower it. With the air pressure, I may not need to, to have it uh, suspended. I'm not, uh, I'll have to do a test on that after a while. Right now I'm showing about 50 pounds on the gambrel. When I made the tank before I filled it up, I weighed just the tank. And the tank, when it's empty, is 30 pounds. I put two gallons of waste motor oil into the tank and that brought me up to about 50 pounds. So uh, when I'm using it on waste oil, I'll just have to keep an eye on the, uh, the weight on the scale. And when it starts getting close to 30 pounds, where then, uh, you know, go ahead and, and lower it down, bleed the air pressure off, fill the tank back up, put the air pressure back on and raise it back up. Anyway, I think now, last night it was burning extremely well with uh, about 10 PSI worth of air on that tank. Um, it made the forge, or the foundry, it made it burn way hotter. Uh, it was way more controllable. It was like, you know, going from driving a, you know, a 1970 Ford pickup truck that, uh, you know, was only hitting on five out of the eight cylinders uh, to driving... Well, I won't say a sports car, but you know, uh, you know, say my uh, my new Jeep Cherokee. I mean, it was just very responsive, very, uh, uh, very, very nice. Um, so anyway, so we'll go over the burner. This here is the propane burner setup. You might not be able to see that with all the junk behind it. Anyway, that's kind of my standard propane burner setup. I've got uh, three of these, or four of these, and they work really well, and they're very, very simple. This is just a, a dishwashing fan, uh, which is all you really need for, for propane. And then we've got the uh, an on-off switch, on-off switch for the fan inch and a half gate valve for the air control, half inch uh, ball valve for the uh, the shutoff, half inch needle or quarter inch needle valve for the fuel control. And see where that nipple comes out? See how it's just a quarter inch nipple? Uh, punch a hole through the, the 90, feed it through there, get it in the right position, and then weld it so that it comes out roughly in the middle. 
then you cut the threads off of the, the nipple and then tap the inside of the pipe to accept a bolt. This is a stainless steel, I don't even know what size bolt it is, but it's got about a 16th inch hole drilled through the center of it. And that way you can have removable orifices, like I have another one uh, just sitting on a wire here, I think that's a 3 32nd inch hole. I don't really use it very often, but... And this just threads in here. There's no thread tape or anything on this portion. If it leaks a little bit, it's all going into the combustion chamber anyway. So you tighten that down. Grab your inch and a half fitting, or nipple. Screw it on, and then the whole thing goes into that uh, holder assembly that's welded to the side of the foundry or a forge. Either way. Now, the shark bite fittings, just in case you've never seen a shark bite fitting, the nice thing about these is not only are they, you know, pretty high pressure water pipe, but they're, um, they're a quick disconnect. So that is a shark bite fitting, a half inch, just a plug. See the little fingers in there, along with the little plastic sleeve? So that just fits onto the end of your, your water pipe. And I'm doing this trying around the camera here. Let me move you over to the side. It slips over there and then will not come out. You can tug on that thing all day long and it won't come out. This is one of the fancy tools for taking those shark bites off. Generally speaking, I just use a, an adjustable wrench. But this is a system that's probably going to be taken apart and put back together quite a few times. So I uh, decided to go ahead and put you get the you know spring for the, the extra dollar and fifty cents for this uh, little plastic tool. But you're pushing that collar up and then just push the fitting right up off the pipe. Works really slick. Now I've run, you know, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of miles of, of this, uh, this PEX pipe. Um, it's rated at 160. It says here right on the side, 160 PSI, if I can get it to show up for you. 160 PSI at 73 degrees. 100 PSI, 180 degrees. No. 100 PSI at 73, 80 PSI at 180. Yeah, somewhere around there. But I've never run this stuff with waste oil before. In fact, I've never run anything but uh, but water and a couple of times air through it. So it'll be real interesting to see, you know, whether the waste oil breaks it down. This here is uh, one of the fans. This is the uh, exhaust fan for a natural gas furnace. So, you know, when you turn your thermostat up and you hear that fan kick in but there's no heat coming out, that's what this fan is doing. It's uh, purging um, the, burn, the combustion chamber on your furnace uh, so that just in case there was any gas leaks, it won't ignite those and have an explosion instead of a controlled burn. So they're relatively small fans. And this one right here is pretty close to the one that's on the foundry. This is a 1.3 amp, uh, 3000 RPM. The one that's on the foundry looks exactly like this, but it is a 1.5 amp and one 25th horsepower uh, motor, but it's about the same size and everything. So anyway, um, yeah, I guess that's it. I mean, uh, when I go to start this, I'll go ahead and start it up on propane and get uh, get the foundry hot to begin with, and then um, I'll go ahead and pressurize the tank with about 10 psi worth of air. Uh, like I said, my gauges don't on my air compressors don't go any, you know, they're really tough to uh, 
You can do 10 pound increments, but doing five pound increments would be pretty tough. So pressurize the tank, open up the, uh, the oil flow to the line, and then crack the, the control valve for the oil, introduce the oil into the foundry. Once it's burning, shut the propane off. The oil needs a bit more air than what the propane needs, so I'll open up a couple of rounds on the, the air valve and then fine tune it a little bit as to how much, you know, how high I want the flame um, and, you know, to get a good clean burn so there's no smoke or anything. I also have the shop door open. Uh, and yeah, we'll fire it up and then uh, it'll take, you know, 10, 15 minutes to do that. So I'll, I'll go ahead and do that off camera and that way um, you don't have to just sit and watch it warm up. Anyway, that's the new setup and we'll find out here in a second how it works. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you soon.